Now, next is my favorite part, mascara. A precious 11-year-old girl, full of personality, full of life. Comment if you like the makeup that I chose. But tragically, her life would soon be cut short. She got off the bus, came into the house, and her father shot her right in the chest. Sixth grader Tamia Batts was like most girls her age. Hey, YouTube. She loved playing with makeup. Today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial what I have always wanted to do. Her favorite color was pink. And the color I'm going to use today kind of matched my outfit. And she loved to show off for the camera. In the fall of 2016, Tamia was excited about starting a new school year at a new school. They had spent all day out shopping for school supplies. The sixth grader was dressed to impress for her first day at Knox Doss Middle School, just outside of Nashville. She had all new clothes, it appeared to me. Uh, she, had, uh, she was very neat. She had her backpack on, looked like an angel. At the end of her first day, Tamia boarded the bus and headed home, where she knew her dad would be waiting for her. He wasn't sure what time she would be home, so he was home and thought he'd take a little nap. District Attorney Ray Whitley says surveillance cameras captured Timothy Batts doing something else. He was walking around uh, in the house with a cell phone up to his left ear and a loaded handgun. Just walking around with a cell phone and a gun? Yes. In his hand? In his hand. Uh, and the gun was loaded with 22 rounds of ammunition. Minutes later, surveillance video shows his daughter, Tamia coming in from school. She took her backpack off. She set her backpack down. She took her shoes off, set her shoes very neatly by the backpack. Defense attorney Joy Kimbrough says Timothy was just starting to doze off when he heard the door open. He yelled again, who is that? No one responded. He sat up in his bed, and then he saw a shadow, a quick shadow just leaped across like Shadow. When he saw that shadow, he knew someone was in the house. Fearing for his life, he grabs a gun from under the dresser and goes to investigate. He's about to exit his room door. His daughter, and see, he doesn't know it's his daughter, jumps from the side, his right side. She comes from the side and says, raw, like that. Trying to scare him. Well, she grabs him. Just messing around. And he thinks it's an intruder. Right. He thinks, for a split second, they got me. And he shoots one time. The bullet went through the little girl's chest, came out of the other side, and lodged in the wall. She had a little training bra, and there was a bullet hole in the training mm. bra. After the shot is fired, surveillance video shows Tamia jumping up and down. He said, did I shoot you? Did I shoot you? She said, I don't know. She pulled up her shirt, and he saw the hole. The frantic father grabbed his daughter and rushed her to a nearby hospital. But two hours later, the bright and beautiful 11-year-old was dead. It was so sad what happened, but it was just a big mistake. A big mistake that prosecutors say Timothy Batts tried to cover up with a big lie. Now, he initially said that she was shot when she arrived home. He told the police officer the same thing, that she was holding her chest and she was bleeding from her chest when she came into the house. She was screaming. And, of course, that was a total fabrication. Attorney Joy Kimbrough says her client had to lie so he could stay with his daughter. He doesn't know if she's going to need blood. He doesn't know if she's going to need an organ. But he knows whatever she needs, he's going to be there for her. But he lied to police. Well, that's the only way he could stay. Given his criminal record, she says Timothy believed if he told the truth, he would have been arrested immediately. And this last father-daughter conversation would have never happened. On the ride to the hospital, he's apologizing. I'm so sorry to Mia. I'm sorry. She said, Daddy, I know it was an accident. Daddy, I'm not mad at you. That's haunting that she was alive all that time, only to die at the hospital. Timothy didn't keep up the lie for long. I wasn't expecting you to, to show up here. This is a surprise for me. I appreciate you coming in. Hours after his daughter's death, That's my daughter. That's my baby. That's my world. I love her to death. He walked into the police station voluntarily without an attorney. And then I seen a shadow. So I'm like, who is it? And explained how he had mistakenly killed his firstborn child. And then as I'm creeping, 
somebody to jump out. He promised to fully cooperate with investigators, and he had one request. Would you please let me stay out long enough to bury my little girl? And what did they do? They arrest him, and he's given a $1 million bond. An amount he couldn't afford. Why do you think that was? I don't know why he was treated differently. Do you think it was because he was an ex-con? Ex-cons get bonds all the time. Timothy Batts was charged with reckless homicide, possessing a firearm as a felon, and tampering with evidence. What happened next stunned prosecutors. That courtroom was packed with Timothy Batts supporters, and we had a dead 11-year-old girl that hadn't even been buried yet. There was suddenly a groundswell of support for the embattled father. Thousands signed a petition asking for his release. Ultimately, a judge reduced Bat's bond to a half million dollars. A lot of his supporters got together and uh, people uh, pooled their money. The father of four made bail and was out in time to attend Tamiya's funeral. But his freedom didn't last long. He uh, apparently had an affinity for uh, cocaine, for drugs, and uh, that uh, came back to haunt him. A month after his release, Timothy's bond was revoked. He was back behind bars. The judge uh, specifically stated as a, a condition of his bond that he was uh, not to use any drugs whatsoever, but he tested positive for cocaine within five days. Despite passing subsequent drug tests, Bats would remain behind bar. It is totally irrelevant. Up next, how long would he be locked up? The case against the grieving father goes to court. The gun was in my hand and it just went off. He was reckless uh, in deciding to pull that trigger. She was like, Daddy, Daddy, just tell me this a dream. Daddy, tell me it's a dream. And then I was like, you know, I just kept on telling her, I'm sorry to me, I'm sorry. And then she was like, I know. She like, I know it. 